Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. I've been noticing these past couple of days there have been some really, really, really nice examples of rare guitars showing up. The guitar market today is really an interesting place. Things are selling for crazy amounts, and I think we're starting to finally hit those thresholds where we're seeing other things come out of people's private collections because they've reached the, okay, I'll sell it if people are paying this kind of money. So this is just a short list that I created from last night. First one being offered by Rumble Seat Music was this absolutely gorgeous 1959 Gibson ES5 Switchmaster in a blonde finish. As you can see, it's already gone, so somebody bought it on their website and I do not blame them. Like normally, I'm a stickler for condition, so armware right here would turn me off, but this has a whole vibe to it. This instrument has seen countless shows, probably with an original owner since brand new, so it would have a lot of tales to tell, but the whole ES5 Switchmaster is kind of an interesting guitar to begin with, but to get one in a natural finish that's all beautifully figured like this one, even a headstock stinger on this one, you can see the Grover Imperial tuners, three-piece neck, these are just kind of interesting guitars to begin with, because they have independent volume and tone controls for each of these, on top of their weird pickup selector system. One, two, two, three, and all. Speaking of rumble seat, they also listed a bucket head. These things, I guess, are selling for almost $10,000 now for really clean ones, which kind of stinks because I am looking for an absolute mint condition one. I don't want any blemishes. I don't want any yellowing. It has to have the locking Grover tuners. I don't want the Schaller ones like this one. That's just a personal preference because the earlier ones had the Grovers. I will pay $10,000 for one in mint condition that has no finish checking or anything wrong with it. The problem is, is buying online, people list them as very good near mint condition. They don't detail the condition, so I don't know if it's what I want to buy or not. There was one last week for 10 grand, but it was in Canada and it just seemed like a too good to be true like situation, like they weren't actually telling you everything that was wrong with it. Next up here, a couple of these SG raw powers have been showing up. So it makes this run interesting, they also had less ball variants, as they have the maple fretboard, and I believe maple bodies on top of it. And they came in a few different finishes, so I've been kind of looking out for the right one that I want to document. I really like their 12th fret inlay being the trapezoid, whereas everything else is still the dots. Doesn't make much sense, but they're kind of cool guitars, all satin finished. Yeah, here's an example of one of the Les Pauls in a gold top finish. Here's a white one, ooh, that's not, not a bad price. Problem is a lot of these get headstock repairs and other various damages because people like these things. They play great, as evidenced by the wear and tear on this fretboard. Oh, and that's the other thing. A lot of them are overseas, so this might be an enticing price, but then you got $300 to get it to the U.S. I was kind of hoping to pick one up for about 900 bucks. <laughs> but the really clean ones, they seem to fetch, you know what, 17 up to 2500 occasionally, but you have to be very desperate to want one for that price. Well, that's just one of those obscure models that appears to be going up in value. Next up, a beautiful offering in Thailand by Fusion Music. This is a Spotlight Special. We just unboxed a whole boatload of these things a couple of days ago. And when I saw this, it was about 2 in the morning, I was like, oh, that is nice. It's got the pinstripey but wide flame, and then it's got all the vertical wood grain. It's everything I like about these Antique Natural Spotlight Specials. So it's like, yep, let's buy it. And then I looked at the price, ah, 8,000 bucks. Okay, it could be worth it if it was mint condition. But looking at this, it appears to have been played quite a bit. A lot of the gold has been worn off. You still miraculously have the Tim Shaw PAF stickers. It looks like that one's kind of worn. And these natural sunlight shots, they're great. They show off the flame top to the best of its ability, but then this photo shows you what it looks like in person, you know, in regular lighting, and it still looked fantastic. Fretboard looked all right, the headstock looks okay, the back looks surprisingly clean, but the neck has a very dark hue to it. I vaguely remember having one like this before. It's not actually discoloration from playing, it's just a discoloration in the wood. I thought it was strange on that one too. It's either that or I'm remembering it wrong, but it does look like this one has at least some sort of a ding that might have been tried to get touched up. But the headstock tells us this was number 193. I mean, these perloy tips started as pure white, so there's definitely been some smoking tar discoloration to this thing. It even still has the original pickguard that came in the case and some of the paperwork. 
But the thing that killed this example for me is someone refretted it, which is a big dilemma for me because natural spotlight specials have the multicolored binding, which gives them a very unique fret nib. And whenever you refret a Gibson, generally you're going to lose your fret nibs unless you pay a huge premium to keep them. Even then it's not even guaranteed that all of them will survive. But the new frets on this are likely a good thing, it'll make it play better, but as far as a collectible example, I, I decided to pass on this one. And I think that was important closure for me as to what I want to do with spotlights. Maybe I don't want to own every single one. Like, I enjoy knowing the stories of these, but at the end of the day, I think just having one or two nice examples of each color and variation would be more than enough for me to be happy. But I change my opinions on that daily. <laughs> So it's available. Do I think it's worth that much with the refret? Eh, probably not, but it is a very nice example if you're looking for something to play. Also at the same time in Korea at Monkey Tar Shop is what they call a Gibson Custom Shop Edition Heritage Series Standard 80... 1982. Okay. <laughs> That's a, a confusing title. Like, even if you know the prehistoric era of Gibson and the early days of the reissues, he's essentially blended three different kind of interesting models. So calling it a standard 80 is playing off the standard 82, standard 83, Black Beauty 83, like we reviewed in this. And then Heritage Series, obviously after the Heritage Series in 1980. So it seems like he's trying to just call it a standard 80, essentially, because I thought he was going for Heritage 80, because that's what those things were called, Heritage 80s. But this has a really interesting flame figuring pattern here, and then it's really tight there, so not the best matching top, but it's a very lemony burst color. You've got the right prehistoric knobs that I love on these things. It seems to be in pretty good condition as well. The fretboard has been taken care of. You don't have to clean it and all that. It's not overly yellowed. I would so far say this is a collectible example. But then we get to the back. I was expecting a Heritage 80, and no, that's not what this is. This is one of the small custom order 59 reissue style guitars, kind of around that same point in time. So this says N0026. I've seen very similar things. So this is probably just a dealer custom run or just something strange that has been lost to time. But I love that characteristic yellow grain fill that the 80s Gibsons have. It's just a very homely look, in my opinion. Like, in today's standards, most people probably wouldn't like that. But because it's from the era of Gibson that I really like, I enjoy it. So it does have heritage paperwork, but the N0026. So this seems to be a early reissue before the reissues were reissues, because this actually has a real ABR1 bridge on it instead of the Nashville like the Heritage series has. So I'll be honest, this one is worth what they want. I'm tempted to make them an offer. Next up we have this limited edition classic antique. So what makes a classic antique? Well, in my opinion, it's the headstock binding. This is one of the ones that I, I don't really like the headstock binding on it. Certain classics look good with it, but this one, I don't know, it's just like a, a brown mahogany top guitar, which makes it cool in its own right. I really, really like the Guitar of the Week. It's a, it's a chambered out mahogany top one. It has like a, a dark burst finish on it. Those things are very good guitars. But this just had a pretty interesting vibe, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. You even get a little bit of a figuring within the body. Not the worst price, but not the best price either. Next up we have a Gibson Invader. I'm still looking for the very right Invader to document because I'll be honest, I don't, I don't really like these. I tried one at a Guitar Center once and it was one of the worst experiences. Actually, that was a Challenger, but these are very similar guitars. It's kind of like a Sonics, but I think with a wooden body. One day I'll find one, but I'm still waiting for a cool color at like 600 bucks. <laughs> I might be waiting a while because now that the Pauls have gone up in value so much, these lesser liked models have pretty much filled in that price point where they used to be. Trust me, guys, there's a lot better guitars you can buy for this price point. Speaking of vintage guitars at attractive price points, this one came from Chicago Music Exchange, a 1965 legitimate SG standard for only 2620. Heck, you can't even buy a brand new Les Paul standard for that much and you get a vintage SG in black. Now, obviously it's, it's gonna have some issues, but it looks pretty darn good for what it is at that price point. So I think it's pretty obvious the black is a refin job. It's got some damage to it. We definitely have some sort of a replaced pickup rings that look way too large for this. Probably modernized hardware, some weird hex nut on this. 
and our binding has been messed with. But then we get to our headstock, it's like, ooh, it looks strangely large for this era. And then you flip it over to the back, yep, then we see another headstock crack. So there's a lot of issues with this guitar. But it's been played, and apparently somebody likes playing it. But cool enough, it actually comes with one of the newer SG Custom Shop cases. But let's see what they have to say. So, repaired output jack, free routed pickup cavities. Hmm, did it start life as a standard? <laughs> ah, they reshaped the neck during the refinish process. They removed the binding, that's what that is. You still see it at the bottom, but I just thought maybe they put black on there. It just seems like this is kind of a basket case, but that is pretty cheap for a 65 SG. I mean, what do we have currently on the market? Y you could get yourself a junior for twice that price. Almost three times the price you could get a special. You have to pay ten times the price to get a Pelham Blue one. Another cool one from CME was this 61 reissue from 2008. So you always know you're dealing with like a late 2000s, early 2010 61 reissue SG. Just by looking at the headstock, they're obnoxiously big and pointy, like pointy in these areas. But I like this one for the wood grain patterns, it's just quite nice. And then you notice, is that a clear pick guard? No, that's just pick guard screws in the top. <laughs> It's it's an acquired taste, but instead of having the holes, they decided, let's just put the screws back in it. I don't want the pick guard covering up all this beautifulness. And it, it kind of works. It's kind of cool. And then this 1981 Explorer showed up. 2500 bucks for one of these. That's a good price. But just looking at this, uh, obviously there's going to be some wear and tear. So maybe replace pickups, definitely lease that one. That could potentially be original. We're missing a knob here. It looks like somebody had a Bigsby on this at one point in time, which means that's not stock. So I continued going through these photos, saw some belt buckle rash. It's got a newer case, but those cases are very expensive on their own. The frets look to be in okay shape in that photo. But then, ooh, we got the headstock break right there. A little bit of a shame, but it looks like they did some sort of maybe a dowel repair. I'm not quite sure. They've got something going through the headstock to keep it secure. All right. Here's a close-up of those Bigsby holes, and then you've got that pick-through area we were looking at earlier. And that's not just a missing knob, that's a broken shaft. So there's supposed to be another semicircle on the other side that has a split in between it. Now, you could potentially glue a knob to that and keep it original, but there's no point. Just replace it at this time, because so much else has been changed on this. I mean, heck, we're even missing an inlay. That's easy enough to replace, but it will look out of place because all the other ones will have a certain patina. But then again, do you really need the third fret marker? But then I started getting to the end of these photos. It's like, oh, a crack on the body that had to be repaired. And then I saw it. Oh, it, it, it hasn't been <laughs> repaired. It's been repaired, but they're missing a chunk out of the body. What happened to this thing? And then all the wear on the neck. This is a beautiful road warrior. But the fact that you actually have a portion of the body missing. At this point, you might as well turn it into the Clapton cut. Because that just looks a bit janky. But at the same time, I guess it's kind of cool too. But with all that damage, is it still worth 2500 bucks? Granted, a normal one would probably be between four and 5000 so it's already almost half priced. I think somebody might still pay like eighteen to 2000 for that. And they are open to offers. But that could be a fun player for somebody. It just needs a little bit of TLC. Ooh, nice. And that pickup in the bridge is actually a Dirty Fingers. That's really rare. You'd find that on like a SG exclusive model that you could check out here. So that has some value to it. That's probably an original tar back yet. Well, no, according to this, it's a T-top. So that's worth good money. Actually, it might be a Tim Shaw if it's a 1981 and original. Ah, they're not even giving you the good case. You can't do that. Don't take photos with that case and then not include it. That makes me upset. Because that gets me thinking, all right, that's $800 just for that case. And then you get upset because they hit it in here all the way down here where nobody reads the whole thing anyways. That's a little bit deceiving, I think. But I get why they did it. It's a beautiful backdrop. Looks like we've got another CME listing here. They must have just got back from a guitar show. This is a 56 Les Paul gold top, but instead of being a gold top, it's a, like a root beer burst with a quilt top to it. 56 reissue. That's pretty nice looking because it's like the same color as the mahogany on the back. So I thought that was notable of sharing. 
Apparently it was a made to measure custom order in root beer. 4,500 bucks. Yeah, I could see somebody paying that. I mean, if you could talk them down to like 38, I think you'd be in better shape. But at the end of the day, you're buying from a dealer. I don't think they'll haggle that much. Continuing on with beaten, broken, battered, abused guitars, this was an SG Celebrity. Those are really cool guitars. They look like this. Are you enjoying what you see on the screen? Now look at this one. They ruined it. They just like, hey, you know what makes this guitar cool? Let's black it out. Ah, that's unfortunate. Those are collectible guitars, but this one, it's in player's great shape now. It's definitely seen better days. However, what this example would be good for is parting some of the good parts out to restore some of the original ones that are in better shape. This thing's beat up. You don't need the original pink blanket case. You could sell that off separately. You don't need those original tuners. You can get rid of those. The white knobs, white poker chip, just go ahead and sell those off. One's broke, so you won't get the complete set. And most importantly, that back plate could be worth something to someone. $12.50 for that? Ooh, yeah, that's a good deal. What's funny is he thinks he's even priced it high. I mean, that case, granted, if it's in good condition, is probably worth up to $400 to the right. Okay, scratch all that. <laughs> that case is not $400 worth. Maybe $200 if you're lucky now. Another one for our beautiful guitars showing up. This is a new old stock 1988 showcase edition. This was tempting. The problem is, is the showcase editions, they're collectible only if they're in mint condition. Because most Gibson guys, they hate active electronics in their guitars. So, a limited edition that came stock with EMGs, most of them, there were a few within this run that were spared active electronics. It just makes these not all that desirable when they're in player's grade shape. So finding one in supposedly new old stock condition was interesting to me, because the logo, it's still all white, but the guitar is still a creamed over white appearance. So that means these didn't actually start pure white. They had a yellow tint to it from the factory, apparently. If anybody was around when these things were first introduced, please do back that story up. I was tempted to pick this up because his asking price of 4,200 bucks from a well-known dealer with original shipping carton and all that, it's fair for that model if you are collecting it. But if you just want one to play, you might as well buy this one. It's been for sale for over a year at 2,500 bucks. And the last interesting guitar for us to look at today is this. Who wouldn't want to refinish their RD Custom in a purple burst finish? I would say it, it, it turned out okay. Like you got the maple fretboard, the zebra bobbin pickups all blacked out, an actual burst shape on here. But something about this finish just, it doesn't seem like it was done the best. Like sometimes you look at a refin and go, that's not gonna feel like a factory finish. Now I could be wrong, because some angles it looks better than others. At least they left the neck alone so the feel will be right. But this is an old refinish, so it must be halfway decent. You can see they had a star sticker on here, so that's what the original paint looked like. And it's just kind of faded into this purple hue. It's kind of a cool guitar. Made in 1977, but unfortunately no hard case. And they want 3200 bucks. Yeah, that one just... It doesn't make sense to buy when you can get an original one with a case, let alone the original case, for significantly less. Like, even with original paperwork, this is actually a really good deal. What's wrong with it? I'm not sure. I mean, it's got some wear and tear. Beautiful figured neck. Yeah, that's a deal. Somebody snapped that up. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at some of these finds. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.